today i am going to explain about design of tension member so let us proceed first introduction part so let us proceed the introduction part as i mentioned the tension member considered for the design is a linear member which carries an axial pole uh, these member undergo extension due to the applied axial pole this is one of the common type of force transmitted in the structural system tension member are very efficient since the entire cross section carries uniform stress unlike flexural member hence the design is not affected by the type of section used that is uh, plastic compact or semi compact some of the common example of tension members in structures are bottom cord pin jointed roof trusses bridges transmission line and communication towers wind brassing system in multi story building etc a tension member is designed in such a way that the applied axially load is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the plate or of the member and hence it is also called as tie member or simply a tie as we study the introduction part of the tension member so i think now we are able to identify uh, that's why we are going to uh, uh, study the design of tension member that is nothing but the objective of tension member so the objective of tension member is to determine the tensile strength of a given member having a specified end connection also the strength of this member is influenced by a several factor uh, such as uh, length of connection uh, type of connection that is the connection may be bolted connection or welded connection is eccentricity uh, size and shape of fasteners uh, net area of cross section and shear lag at the end connection types of tension members the type of structures and uh, method of end connections determine the type of a tension member in a structural steel construction tension members used may be broadly grouped into four groups which we are going to study one by one first one is wires and cables the wire type are used for hoists derricks rigging slings guy wires and hangers for suspension bridges second one is rod and bars the square and round bars are quite often used for small tension members the round bars with threaded end are used with pin connections at the ends instead of threads uh, the end of uh, rectangular bars or uh, plate are enlarged by furring and bored to form i bars the i bars are used with pin connections uh, the rods and uh, bars have the disadvantages of inadequate stiffness resulting in noticeable sag under the self weight <coughs> now the another one is single structural plates and shapes uh, the single structural shapes is also called as angle section uh, and t section which is used as tension member Uh, the angle section uh, are considerably more rigid than the wire ropes rods and bars here uh, when the length of tension member is too long uh, then the single angle section also become flexible here the standard structural shape of typical tension member are angle section t section channel section box section i section tubular section Uh, angle section may be in the form of single angle double angle single plate angle and uh, t sections having uh, the shape like t uh, channel section may be uh, c channel u channel and uh, box section having the shape like rectangular or a square the single angle section have the uh, disadvantage of eccentricity in both plane in a rivet connection Uh, and also uh, the channel section has eccentricity in one axis only single channel section have uh, high rigidity in the direction of web and uh, low rigidity low rigidity uh, in the direction of flange occasionally uh, i section are used 
uh, as tension member and uh, the eye section have more rigidity and single eye section are more economical than built up section also uh, another one is built up section uh, the built up, uh, built up section is formed by two or more than two member when the single rolled steel section cannot furnish the required area then built up sections are used uh, the double angle section of unequal legs are extensively used as tension member in the roof trusses a built up section may be made of two channels placed back to back with gusset in between them such section are used for medium load in a single plane truss uh, what happened in two plane trusses two channels are arranged at a distance with their flange turned inward uh, it simplifies uh, the tra uh, the transverse connection and also minimizes lacing uh, the flanges of two channels are kept outward as in the case of cord member or long span girder uh, in order to have greater lateral rigidity now slenderness ratio uh, slenderness uh, ratio of tension member is ratio of its unsupported length to its least radius of gyration the limiting slenderness ratio is required in order to prevent uh, the undesirable lateral movement or excessive vibration also it may be uh, it is also defined as uh, the ratio of effective length the ratio of effective length to corresponding radius of gyration of the sex thus slenderness ratio as uh, slenderness ratio is given by l to the base e by r equal to capital k capital l by small r here l to the base e equal to effective length which is nothing but uh, capital k into capital l where capital l equal to actual length of tension member and r equal to appropriate radius of gyration that is small r equal to under root i by a where i equal to inertia and a equal to area now shear lag uh, in tension member the tensile force to a tension member is transferred by a gusset plate or by the adjacent member connected to one of the leg either by bolting or welding that it may be the the connection may be bolted or welded uh, here uh, the force which is transferred to one leg uh, by the end connection uh, it gets transferred as tensile strength uh, tensile stress over the entire cross section by shear hence uh, so uh, the distribution of tensile stress on the section uh, from the first bolt hole to the last bolt hole will not be uniform hence uh, the connected uh, leg will have higher stresses at failure uh, while the stresses in the outstanding leg will be relatively lower uh, however uh, at a section far away from the end connection uh, the stress distribution becomes uh, more uniform and here uh, the stress transfer mechanism uh, that is internal transfer of forces from one leg to uh, the other uh, that is flange to web or uh, from one part to the another part uh, will be shared and because one part lags behind the other the phenomena is referred as uh, shear lag the shear lag reduces the effectiveness of the component plate of a tension member that are not connected directly to the gusset plate here uh, the efficiency of tension member can be increased by reducing the area of uh, such component which are not directly connected at the end the different modes of uh, failure occurs in tension member are gross section yielding net section rupture and block shear failure failure which is uh, because of uh, this failure uh, is code uh, mention uh, the uh, the design strength strength of this failure in page number 32 uh, clause uh, 6.2 uh, 6.2 mention the design strength due to yielding of gross section and uh, 6.3 mention design strength due to rupture of 
critical section and also uh, uh, the design strength may be depends upon the uh, single uh, single angle and also uh, uh, double angle also uh, 6.3 uh, 6.4 mention the design strength due to block shear page number uh, 33 so the design strength of tension member is uh, explained or mentioned in is code uh, 800 2007 in page number 32 and page number 33 uh, after designing or uh, after calculating this value we uh, select minimum value from this factor affecting the strength of tension member uh, that is uh, the tensile strength of member uh, depends on uh, the factor such as length of connection also uh, length of welding or effective length of welding uh, size and spacing uh, net area of cross section uh, type of fabrication connection eccentricity uh, shear lag at the end connection thank you for watching